Hello, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this packed video short, we're going to cover one approach to establishing ROI, return on investment, via the PAC processes for training and development, learning, and knowledge management. PAC is an acronym, performance-based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven, training and development of any blend. An approach to addressing return on investment potential to help one of my clients decide whether or not it was worthy to spend $2 million to implement a curriculum architecture design was documented in an article that I published in Technical and Skills Training back in 1991. This was an ASTD publication. They titled the article Costing Out a Training Project, which is not just a misnomer, it's a vast misnomer from what the intent of the article was and what the article actually addressed. So it didn't address at all costing out a training project. It was an article that addressed how to determine what the potential was for the return. Why would we invest $2 million? What will we get out of it? Well, my client was a manufacturing organization and rather than looking at return on investment, which was a concept that they were familiar with, a better concept, a better metric was return on assets, asset uptime, machinery uptime. If the machinery was down and you had a lot of downtime, you couldn't meet your productivity requirements. So I latched on to this idea of using performance, performer uptime. And so we did this little math thing in a room full of my project steering team members. And we ballparked the number of performers at 100. There was more than that. We identified what their salary dollars were and at $35,000. It was more than that. We said if you got 100% proficiency out of these 100 performers, this is what you're paying for that. You're paying $3.5 million a year for these people to be on the payroll and to perform. But are we getting 100% work proficiency? No, we were not. Were we getting 60% work proficiency? No, it was actually worse than that. So when you did the math and found out that you're only getting $2.1 million at the high side, because it's actually worse than that, but you're paying $3.5 million for that performance, you're leaving on the performance table, so to speak, $1.4 million a year. Is it worth it to spend $2 million on the training for these people? This was the decision that the client came to was that, yeah, we weren't even counting all the scrap product that was produced, which far exceeded that $1.4 million discrepancy. And when they could see easily that they would more than pay for the $2 million investment before six months was up because we had highballed certain numbers and lowballed other numbers they knew that we made a fairly rosy uh, we had a fairly rosy look at this situation that the numbers were much higher so high in fact that no one ever wanted to talk about this again the flip chart page was ripped off of the chart and ripped to shreds by the client at the beginning of the meeting um, because they knew that their current situation and the gaps had such a high risk cost return value that it was become that it was a no brainer to just invest the two million dollars in the training, bring the target audiences up to a higher level of proficiency, and it would be well worth it for the organization. I hope that this video short and the series have been helpful to you in helping you to establish a practice of performance-based training and development, learning, and knowledge management. I have been conducting, writing, and presenting on these methods since the early 1980s. My recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in much greater detail.